This is truly a blue planet, with ocean covering nearly three quarters of the surface of the Earth. Although a single mass of interconnected water, it is divided arbitrarily into the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Arctic and Southern Oceans. Around three billion people rely on the oceans, with nearly a fifth of their protein coming from it. Fishing and aquaculture assure the livelihoods of one in ten of the world's population. The world's climate depends on the temperature of the ocean, the flow patterns within it and its interaction with the atmosphere. The ocean stores over 90% of the heat captured by the greenhouse effect. We ignore it at our peril. The Arctic is almost certainly gone. If you doubt that mankind has the power to change the Earth's climate, then all you have to do is look at the Arctic. In the previous 30 years, summer ice cover has fallen by half, and its volume has fallen by three quarters. By summer 2040, the Arctic Ocean is forecast to be ice-free. Climate change skeptics may shrug or even celebrate for an ice-free Arctic promises a shortcut for shipping between Asia and the Atlantic coasts of Europe and the Americas. A better response would be fear. The Arctic is both a bellwether of the climate and an actor too. The problem is our emission of the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide. CO2. More CO2 means more warming, a simple equation. Except it's not that simple, because feedback loops complicate matters. Some dampen warming, some speed it up. Models suggest that feedback in the Arctic may be speeding up warming greatly. You see, seawater is darker than ice, absorbing heat rather than reflecting it into space. That melts more ice, which leaves more seawater exposed, which melts more ice, and so on. This explains why the Arctic is warming faster than the rest of the planet. The second feedback loop occurs on land. In the Arctic, this is mostly permafrost, which locks up a great deal of organic material. Melting will expose it to decay or fire, both of which will release more greenhouse gases. Warming of the Arctic could be malevolent. The temperature difference between the poles and the tropics drive air currents, change the behavior of the northern jet stream, a current that circulates the pole. Oscillations sometimes bring cold air south and warm air north, causing unprecedented snowfalls in winter or heat waves in summer. The hard truth is that yesterday's Arctic has slipped away. Efforts to slow global warming by cutting emissions are essential, of course, but the melting of the Arctic demonstrates that humans cannot undo climate change with the wave of a wand. To survive, we need to adapt. The ocean is crucial for life on our planet and is important for climate regulation. It is true that the ocean limits global warming, but it is also affected by it. The ocean changes, becoming hotter, more acidic and less oxygenated. As a regulator, its role is now threatened. Climate gyrations impact the oceans, leading to sea level rise and the increase in the number of destructive cyclonic storms or spring tides. These affect both marine environments and human populations. Floods, coastal erosion, displacement and economic hardships are obvious problems. The ocean exchanges gas, water and heat with the atmosphere and distributes them around the globe. These mechanisms are important for the Earth's climate. The ocean limits global warming, absorbing over 90% of the excess heat caused by the greenhouse effect. It absorbs a quarter of mankind's CO2 emissions. The ocean's storage capacity is not unlimited. Its ability to absorb CO2 has already decreased in some regions. Scientific observations show that some waters are warmer, more acidic and less oxygenated already, altering the ocean's ability to regulate the climate. Climate change that affects the oceans have consequences for island and coastal populations, but their re repercussions go beyond these regions. The environment, economy and livelihoods of many communities around the world will be impacted. According to the 2014 IPCC report, sea level rose by nearly 20 centimetres between 1901 and 2010. We've experienced extreme levels during storms since 1970 that have caused flooding and coastal erosion. Recent modelling suggests a further 2 metre rise by the end of the century. Warming, acidification and deoxygenation of the oceans affect marine species and disrupt the ocean food web too. 
Some species will adapt, while others migrate to cooler, deeper waters or to the north. Some species may disappear. Higher acidity impacts sea life with calcium-based skeletons, fish larva growth and development of coral reefs that provide shelter to millions of marine species. Shellfish farming, aquaculture and fisheries will be adversely affected. Climate change is likely to displace populations, particularly in developing countries and the poorest communities, especially those in coastal areas and low islands. This is already a reality in regions throughout the world. All is not lost and there are initiatives that can be taken. In particular, we must manage marine resources in a sustainable way, implement ecosystem protection and restoration, reduce the risk associated with the inevitable disasters with upfront actions, and adapt by creating alternative economic opportunities or facilitate migration. Thanks to technology, the ocean's expanse and remoteness are becoming less formidable and less of an excuse for inaction. Better measurement of global warming's effect on the ocean does not make a solution any easier. Despite the USA's dithering, the recent Paris Agreement is the single best hope for protecting the ocean and its resources. The limits agreed in Paris will not prevent sea levels from rising and corals from bleaching. Both problems risk becoming worse. Mankind is increasingly able to see the damage it is doing to the ocean. Whether it can stop it is another question.